thank, thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting me to this panel uh, as uh, Albert introduced a uh, former editor in chief and then uh, past uh, years by date already. But of course, uh, as I say, whenever you do any kind of research, you want to share both the positive examples, negative examples, the strengths and the weaknesses. Unfortunately, in this panel, I'll be the negative example and the weakness example. So, in terms of answering to your question, how to publish, you all know the answer because uh, you've got one paper or papers, you know, this wonderful conference already, so you are fully justified. Either you have gone to the beach already or you are going to the beach afterwards. Um, so, the second thing I'd like to say is uh, the following part is entirely my uh, personal view, highly biased. Uh, potentially incorrect. But for the sake of uh, discussion and debate, I would like to share with you the secret of public papers. And the secret is very simple. To publish the best paper is very easy. All you need to do is do a high quality research and you can get published. Uh, so I think very, very important to remember before you ask a question, how to publish, and make sure we have a good research to publish. So the secret is really uh, having this fundamental uh, high quality research as the basis of anything. So this is quite an uh, incorrect view in terms of a uh, uh, panel. A panel is about how to publish papers journals, now I'm saying instead of spending time on how to publish, it might be more interesting, more enjoyable to spend more time on how to do the research better. Because once the research is better, then uh, publishing will be a lot easier. Uh, but anyway, I still have to focus on this uh, uh, panel. But let's make an assumption. Uh, let's see something we do all the time with publish paper. Let's assume we do have a good quality paper. Then what? How do I get it published? Of course we have good quality paper, you write it and then publish it. But before you write it, I think that's something is uh, there are some interesting questions because uh, research is supposed to be fun, to be very enjoyable. Don't make it very dry. So you have two types of questions you can ask yourself. Always ask yourself. Stand here, ask on that side. I try to answer on that side. <laughs> so why do I need to publish this paper? Of course, one possible answer is my supervisor asked me to write a paper. <laughs> or you can say, if I publish a grant, I have to write a paper, otherwise I can't submit a report to end the grant. So they're all valid reasons might not be very good reasons. Really ask yourself, do I have to write this paper? Because uh, it is true, it's more enjoyable to spend some time to get closer to a nation on the beach than spending time on writing a paper. So you really have to ask the question, is there the right thing to do to write a paper? If I do write a paper, who should be the reader of my paper? Will they be interested in what I'm writing? Or why they should be reading my paper instead of reading Professor so and so's paper. Okay, so, so I think that's an interesting question because uh, it does give you a sense of internal objectives you are going to put into the paper, internal target audience, and then internal language that you can use in writing the paper. Don't stop there because uh, if you want to enjoy life a little bit more, not only you can talk to yourself, you can also talk to your friends or colleagues. Here's one more exercise. You can talk to your friends and then describe the ideas of your next paper to him or to her. And then staring at her or staring at him and look at his facial expression or body language. Okay, let's see how he behaves. You'll be surprised how much information you get out of that 
just by the expression of your face in a body language. And then when you describe something in the corridor or take these exciting ideas to your either male friends or female friends, and then she might say, oh, is that what we are going to do? Or you say, oh, yes, that's exciting. It says a lot. Then you probably should ask the previous question, should I really write a paper? After this fat bit, uh, you get on with the task of writing the paper for that journal. So the only thing I try to follow, and I advise everyone to follow, is that whenever we write a paper, always keep readers in mind, instead of reviewers or editors. Never ever try to think, if I write this paper, what will reviewer think? Instead, is that if I write this paper, what kind of message I want to get across to the reader? Okay? Who is your reviewers or editors in mind? I, I'm not saying anything disrespectful about these distinguished editors sitting in the panel here. <laughs> okay, so how do we write the paper? So here's my second secret. My second secret is you <laughs> ask this question to these people. <laughs> okay. uh, we have this sixth current uh, editor in chief sitting here, and then they got all the answers to you. Then you probably, of course, ask them, why? I know they all look very smart, they look very handsome, but why? Why should I ask them? Uh, so here's a secret number three. I only have three secrets, and then after that, I have no more secrets to share with you. So the current editors, they are in a unique position by seeing lots and lots of papers. Some of the papers are actually well written based on excellent ideas. They also have seen some negative examples in terms of how not to write a paper. I think that's very, very useful. They are in a privileged position by seeing the papers and the reviewers' comments on those papers. So they have seen quite a lot with a tremendous expertise and an insight in terms of how to communicate your wonderful research ideas to the audience. I can show you a few slides to illustrate what our editors have achieved over the years. So here's the uh, latest information in terms of uh, journal impact factors. The latest because uh, it's just been published uh, last week. Uh, within a bracket, the red number are the journal impact factors, which is one indicator, one of many potential indicators to indicate how widely read and cited for a paper on average from this journal. Of course, numbers do not mean very much unless we put them into a context. So here's one context. Uh, if you are interested in computer science, there's actually lots and lots of journals. And they are all well-respected journals, 463. Uh, they all included in a journal citation report. You can see we have uh, extremely highly cited journals within this brand in terms of uh, the second place, the fifth place, the ninth place, the fifteenth place, even on the twentieth place or fortieth place. Let's say the journal is ranked the fortieth place, that means it's within the top ten percent of all of the science journals in the world. That's, that's quite difficult to achieve. And then we have guys here who knows how to do it. So we shall ask them how to do it. Of course, you can still ask me, and then I will ask on, the, on your behalf. Pass a question to these guys. If you are looking at computational intelligence or evolutional computation, then it's probably quite close to a broad category of artificial intelligence. And then if you look at the top 10, and then we have four journals there, including transactions and magazines. 
In any case, uh, just try to avoid any misunderstanding. The impact factor of the journal is entirely different from the paper quality. So never ever quote me saying, I hear this a silly guy who told me from this conference called CEC 2030. He's quoting all these impact factors. That means that the quality of paper must be very good. Uh, those two things are not the same. However, the impact factor is one of many indicators, and useful indicators you can use. And quality, uh, in essence, is not something you can actually measure numerically, but you can come up with a basket of indicators to do the comparison. So, in conclusion, uh, there are a number of very useful aspects to consider when writing a paper. So my previous slides is really conveying an important message from my point of view is before writing a paper, there are a lot of thinking need to go into the question, why should I be writing this paper? Who am I writing this paper for? Now you can get home in writing the paper. The preparation of writing the paper is actually just as important as writing the paper itself because it helps us to clarify in terms of originality of the paper, significance of the paper, correctness of the paper, completeness of the paper, mainly mentioning about the literature part, the scholarship part of the paper, as well as the presentation of the paper. Presentation of paper is not just about the language, it's really about the logical organization and presentation of one paper. I don't know how much time you are going to give to me, but I can stop. <laughs> I, I have a few more slides, but if, I don't want to take much time from this. Uh, um, we can still find I don't know whether you can take time from this. Yeah. More, so, more, more. <laughs> so it's just a, a little bit of elaboration in terms of uh, these different aspects uh, about originality. It's, it's a little bit uh, tedious. Looking at uh, originality, for example, is really a clear statement of uh, original contributions where we focus on both the similarities and the differences. So don't just emphasize differences and ignore similarities. And both aspects are very important. And then for evolutional computation, we do rely quite a lot on computational experiments. So before we do the experiments, uh, principal methodology need to be described, and that part has often been overlooked by myself and then by uh, some of my own students. But we learned a lesson uh, over the years to have principal methodology in place first before we carry out the experiment. And the second lesson we learn is comparison is not with another algorithm which is similar. I suppose I'm interested to be particle swarm optimization, which I am. So the comparison of a new algorithm is not with another piece of algorithm. It's really with a particular problem I have in mind. What's the best algorithm in solving the problem? How do I compare the case a state of art? And that algorithm may or may not be an evolutionary algorithm. And the last part I would like to emphasize for doing any kind of experiments is not guilty context only say I find the best results so far. Uh, a lot of value of doing research is focused on understanding and explaining what's going on. So it's really uh, emphasis on the explanation of why rather than what in terms of uh, research. <laughs> so thank you very much.